Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again from the O-Ray team. In today's video, I'd like to help you better understand the differences between an HDMI switch and an HDMI matrix and where you might decide to use these products with your own media equipment. Now, at a very basic level, both of these technologies allow you to very easily select from multiple input devices. The big difference is the HDMI switch can accept multiple input devices to a single output, whereas the HDMI matrix can accept multiple input devices to multiple outputs. So fundamentally, this is a many-to-one relationship, and this is a many-to-many -many relationship. Now, a few places where you might decide to use an HDMI switch include things like a media center, where you've got a nice widescreen display, and you've got multiple media devices, maybe a game console, a home computer, a DVD player that you'd like to view on that monitor. An HDMI switch allows you to do that by connecting a single HDMI cable from the switch to your monitor and connecting up your media devices to the back, and then just tapping the button on the front to step through those devices. It works really well. Another place you might want to use an HDMI switch is on your desktop. If you've got a computer connected to your monitor, and maybe you've got other devices you'd like to view on that monitor, maybe you also own a laptop or a streaming device, you need an HDMI switch like this to connect up again one cable to the monitor and the multiple devices on the back, and then step through them with the button. Now, the big difference between a media center application and a computer application are a few things, actually. First off, the media center typically requires HDMI connections only, whereas with your computer, you may require some HDMI connections and some other USB-C connections. So you'll notice on this one, there's a USB-C connection on the front and multiple HDMI connections on the back. So it allows you to connect up, for example, two computers and maybe a streaming device or a phone or a tablet on the front through the USB-C. In a media center environment, it's mostly a full-size HDMI connection between this and your monitor and all your multiple devices on the back. Another big difference between them is your proximity to the switch. So in a home theater environment, you're probably pretty far away from where the switch is going to live. It's going to sit on a console someplace and you're back on your couch. So the ability to use a remote control with this one becomes really important so you don't have to keep getting up and running over and making that manual switch using the button on the front. On your computer, you're closer to the monitor, so this can live right on your computer desktop. It's a lot easier just to hit the button and move through those different inputs. One other big difference between them is the way they're powered. So typically a media center device like this will use a power supply that plugs in the wall. It's either five volts or 12 volts, and you've got to plug that in, find a plug and you know connect it up. On your desk, most of these are powered by a standard USB connection. This one's a micro USB in the back end. So it's a standard five volt USB connection. In a lot of cases, you can run a micro USB cable from this to an open port on your computer and not have to worry about that power supply. The last thing I'll mention is that the home media systems typically are a little bit more sophisticated and they provide things like audio extraction so for example with this one it'll actually extract the audio from the device you've selected and allow you to pass that along to a sound bar or to a home audio system for better quality audio that's not as needed over here on the computer side a little more expensive a little less expensive the last thing I'll mention is you want to make sure that you've checked that these are HDMI compliant and you want to check the HDCP compliance as well because if you're pushing 4k content through it you want to make sure you've got the latest version of HDCP to support that now an HDMI matrix is a little bit more sophisticated even still because it'll accept multiple inputs to multiple outputs, but the beauty of an HDMI matrix is that you're not tied with input number one going at output number one every time. The matrix allows you to send the same input to individual monitors or to all monitors at the same time. So it gives you a lot of flexibility in deciding which of your inputs is going to which of your outputs, and you can change that on the fly. These are also more sophisticated in that they accept remote controls, they have ARC support, they have EDID settings that allow you to adjust for different resolutions and frame rates on the output versus the input. A lot of them do audio extraction capabilities. There are models out there that'll do matrix functionality like this one will, as well as extension. So this is also an HDMI extension kit where you can have those remote monitors be located hundreds of feet away from where your content is. So it gives you a lot of flexibility, not only in deciding which input sent to which output, but also how far Far away that output has to be. Now, if you stay tuned, next I'm going to give you some visual representations of what a switch does versus what a matrix does, and then I'll come back at the end and give you a few things to pay attention to if you're comparing different switches against each other to find the one that's right for you, or if you're in the market for a matrix, I'll give you a few things to keep in mind when you're searching for that as well. An HDMI switch allows you to share a single monitor with multiple media devices. You simply connect the switch to your display with a single HDMI cable. These switches are available to support different numbers of input devices, and in this example, we're using a four-input version with a computer, a laptop, a media streamer, and a game console. You can now connect these devices to the switch using a separate HDMI cable for each. If you'd like to view the content from your computer, you can use the button to choose that input. 
Switching to another media device is as easy as simply pushing the selection button a few more times to cycle through your devices. The HDMI matrix offers more flexibility and allows you to connect more than one output device to a number of input devices. In this example, we're using a four input, four output version of the matrix. You'll start by first connecting each of your displays to the HDMI matrix using an individual HDMI cable for each. Then you can connect each of your input media devices to the matrix as well. The big advantage the HDMI matrix provides is it allows you to send each input to its own output or even one input to all four outputs simultaneously. I hope you found that helpful. Here are a few things to keep in mind if you're looking for an HDMI switch or an HDMI matrix to use with your own media equipment. With the HDMI switch, whether it's in your media center or on your desktop connected to your computers, one general rule is to find one that will support more devices than you're currently using. So for example, if it's in your media center and you have three devices today, maybe a DVD player or a game console and a streaming device, you'll want to find a switch that supports at least four devices, even better if it's five or six, because that provides a lot of room for expansion later on when you decide to add more devices. It's true on your desktop as well, because today you may only be connecting a computer and a laptop up to your monitor, but eventually you may want to add a game console and a streaming device, so finding a switch that can support more devices than you're currently using means you won't have to worry about an upgrade anytime soon. Now, where you're using the switch also determines the type of features you're looking for, and the two most common places you'll find an HDMI switch are in a media center and on a desktop connected to your computer, and they're different. So I'll start with the media center. If you're going to use a switch in your media center, one of the most important features is the ability of that switch to support a remote control because the switch will be located near your equipment and near your display, which is typically pretty far away from where you're viewing that content, and you don't want to have to get up off the couch every time you want to change selections on what's being displayed on the monitor. So having a remote control means you can make those choices in the comfort of your couch. Another nice feature is audio extraction capabilities. A lot of these switches provide the ability to strip the audio from the media stream you're enjoying and allow you to pass that along to a sound bar or home stereo system for theater quality audio, and they can do it through analog and digital outputs. They can also support ARC, which is something that's very common on modern devices. Another nice feature is the ability to extend the infrared remote control signal. So for example, on this one, you can plug in an infrared extender. So if this is located inside of a cabinet where the remote control can't reach, you can put this inside the cabinet and extend that LED outside the cabinet to pick up those signals. One other critical feature here is the expanse of EDID support, because EDID determines the input resolution or frame rate versus the output resolution or frame rate. And if you're connecting up a bunch of different devices, they're all going to have different frame rates and resolution. These devices are smart enough to detect the input and make the adjustments for the output, but being able to select that automatically and manually is really important. This device gives you both of those controls. It's less important on your desktop. Now, if you get a device that can't do that EDID selection automatically, you can use what's called an EDID emulator, which will basically read the EDID settings from the device coming in and it'll freeze it in this to sort of pass that along to the switch later on. Now if you're looking for a switch on your desktop, it can be less sophisticated. One of the key features you're not going to need here is a remote control because it's well within reach. You can tap the button and make those choices. Here you're going to find full-size HDMI connections. On your desktop version, you may actually want to have a couple of HDMI connections and one USB-C connection as well because when you're connecting a portable devices, maybe like a tablet or some laptops or even some uh, phones, you'll use USB-C for that connection. You won't need that connection over here as often. So looking for full-size HDMI connections as well as a USB-C is critical. Power supplies are also different between these. This typically has a power supply that plugs into the wall, and that's not a big deal because you have a media console set up, probably plenty of power over there. On your desktop, if you can find one that can be powered with a USB cable like this one can, that's a micro USB connection here. You can plug a cable from here to any available port on your computer, and that's all the power you'll need to operate it. So different use cases and different features. Now, in the case of the Matrix, there are a lot of features you're looking for there. Again, the number of inputs to exceed the number of devices you have is always a good bet. Some of these matrixes are, are able to actually extend the connection of those monitors. So some of these will have multiple inputs and multiple outputs that are connected locally. This one in particular gives you that ability, but it also gives you the ability to extend that monitor a couple hundred feet away over a standard CAT6 cable. So if you need that kind of HDMI extension capabilities, you'll want to look for that built in. Another feature here is to control the selection of the input versus the output through the buttons on the front, 
through a remote control or through software. And this will connect up to your network with a software program that allows you to programmatically select which input goes to which output, and you can change those on the fly. Again, some of these have audio extraction capabilities as well for the media being sent. They can also support multiple audio formats, which is really critical, especially if you're sending the content to a remote location. And those are pretty much the features you're looking for. So I hope you found this content helpful. And until next time, thanks for watching.